Again, my name is Rosalind Rourke. I'm a big fan of the Power of Love Ministry. I've been a Course in Miracles student since the 1980s, a psychotherapist all that time. And uh, a few years ago, maybe it's going to be almost four in January, uh, my daughter passed unexpectedly and you would think that my life would be over. Uh, but some miraculous things happened and I came out of retirement and Jennifer Hadley asked me, well, I came out of retirement first because she invited me to teach for her. Uh, I teach the Enneagram, uh, which is a personality study that reveals the blocks that we particularly use uh, when we're in the separate self. When we're in the oneness, we don't need any tools, because we're there. Uh, so that's something that I taught for her for the, for the last, I have been teaching for the last few years. And then uh, very recently, um, I've been moved to work with other people who've been through other situations uh, where unexpected losses and I put losses in quotes happen because indeed Melissa's body is no longer here, uh, but she is in fact still here as I am where she is. Uh, and uh, so very recently um, I've decided to do a TED talk and then other openings happen. And so I have a website now and I'll tell you about that later. Uh, but now we will begin Sundays with Spirit, and you all have a surprise, because today is my 74th birthday, and it's a surprise party, and you're the surprise guest. So I'm super excited to be with you today. Because it's a holiday, I am also the prayer practitioner for today. I'm not actually a prayer practitioner. That's an official title. I'm your prayer person. And so I'd like to start in a somewhat different way because you're going to hear a lot of my voice today. And I would like this prayer to be collaborative. So the way I would like to do that is to have you first check into your day and how's it been going? Zero to 10. Zero is the worst day ever. 10 is living in oneness, couldn't be better. And particularly, I would like you to think of anything that has caused a bit of tension in you. Something might not have opened. It could have been a jar that didn't open. It could have been a person that bothered you. It could be the smallest, like a one, or it could be a big 10 of grief about a loss. And just think of that for a moment, because during the service, I would like you to check in with that. And at the end of the service, I would like you to check in with that number uh, because I expect whatever that number of annoyance may change uh, during the service. And I would just love for you to be in contact with that movement yourself. So in this collaborative prayer, it's going to be, I'm going to give you Jennifer's I'm going to, joking with you, secret guidelines. And if you're in her programs, you know that she teaches the symbols G-O-D-S for her prayers. So I would like you to follow along with me and name each part for yourself. So the first, the G is for gratitude. And I am so grateful to be here with you today. I give thanks for this day and for you. What is your gratitude? And you can say it out loud to yourself because you're muted and it's very powerful to speak your own voice. Or you can say it 
silently, or you can write it down. I am grateful for, I give thanks for. And now let's make an offering of any block to love. O stands for offering. What might be your block to love today? Maybe it's your perception of the person who annoyed you. Maybe it's your attitude toward that jar that wouldn't open. Uh, whatever it is, it could be big, it could be small, but name it. And then let's make a declaration. D stands for declaration. I am the truth and the light. You are the truth and the light. You are oneness. I am oneness. What would you like to claim? What is the declaration? I am abundance. I live in the light. And let's claim that declaration. Let's make it our own. And as we inhabit that declaration in our lives, the S shares stands for share it. I share it with each and every person as they are one with us. All right. So that's our collaborative prayer. And now I would like to introduce Ray Davis. Are you here, Ray? I hope he's here. He's not in my screen right now. All right. I am. Yay, you're here. That's wonderful. All right. So Ray, I've had the chance to work with Ray before, and he is every single thing that he says in his intro. He's the real deal. Ray Davis is back with us again today. He's a singer and songwriter on a mission to introduce the world to high vibe music and arts. High vibe, according to Ray, it celebrates the best and highest ideas about life, humanity, and each individual's unique opportunity to contribute something good to the world. Ray's songs speak of personal challenge and transformation. He uses stories and reflection to suggest new ways to, check, to deal with old common issues. It's powerful soul medicine to those sick and tired of mediocrity and the status quo. And I can tell you my own personal impression of Ray is that he's all heart and he delivers in his music. Take it away, Ray. Thank you, Rosalind. Happy birthday. Happy Thank birthday. you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Another reason to celebrate on this wonderful Sunday. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be, whatever time it is, it's all the right time. All the right time. Perfect here. I'm grateful to be here with you, uh, bringing some high vibe music, some songs. And um, I'm dressed in a bit of red, white, and blue to commemorate uh, the, uh, uh, our, our Independence Day. Uh, <clears throat> and to use this as an opportunity to suggest uh, an even greater independence for myself and for you if, it, if, if you dig it. That is to say, I'm, I'm more and more seeing myself as a citizen of the world. I love my country. I love being here. I, I love being born here and a citizen here. And I love all humans. I love all species. I love everything about this planet. So I'm here uh, to celebrate while I'm celebrating our independence as uh, um, uh, citizens of the United States of America. I'm celebrating the independence of spirit, the ability of every person on the planet to tap into that wonderful, loving presence that we are celebrating this morning. So. I'm going to begin with this particular song. It's called Holy, Holy. Oh. oh, there's a thing for you to join in on. There'll come a point you'll hear me sing. Holy, 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 holy. Every time it comes up, you're welcome to jump in. 
Holy, holy. I'm going to sing with a lot of <laughs> start this one over. Hope you don't mind. As I said, you always deliver. Thank you. I totally feel holy. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Ray. And now we get to experience Brittany, Brittany Shawley. I'm so excited to meet her. Uh, she's new to this community, I believe. Uh, Sean, who's a wonderful, Sean Wugan is a wonderful leader in the Power of Love Ministry, and she knows Brittany and recommended her to be a speaker today. So I am so excited to hear her message. I'm going to introduce her with uh, what she gave to us about her background. She's a spiritual advisor, 
mindset coach and healthy kitchen person. She came into this profession after having, having an awakening that love is the only way. She was then brought to Jesus on a trip to Maui, Hawaii with miracles. After teaching and learning A Course in Miracles and offering psychotherapy, she opened her practice so she could see what she was receiving. She is now a mom to six-year-old, so she could share. It said she could see, but I think she, uh, she could, she meant, she, this type is a typo, she could share what she was receiving. She's now a mom to six-year-old Ella and a partner every day to enhancing the quality and health and happiness of life. Thank you. Brittany, take it away, would you? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Hear me? I just unmuted. Um, and yes, this is my So thank you all for having me and for inviting me to be here. Good to see you. I see some familiar. Hi, everybody. I'll community for the last 11 years. Um, but in being a mom and <laughs> um, on, on an adventure where I have context. Um, but what's beautiful about this is I have been asking um, Jesus what my next steps are and direction of bringing uh, me back to uh, sharing from the A Course in Miracles is my foundation, which I have done for years and years. So great. Like another sign <laughs> uh, that just adds to all of it. So So as I kind of settle into the moment here and the message that is going to be given today, I just want to settle knowing that I always give this time to the Holy Spirit, to Jesus, to be most helpful and to those who are listening now and maybe even listening later. As I was inquiring as for the topic of today, um, I was uncertain. Um, so patience is definitely an attribute of God. Uh, but what came um, to me was that today I'm relationships and most specifically stability in relationships and how it might be that we could not only find things in inside our own emotions, but stability in our relationships in general. And we're talking about, you know, relationships, but it's going to be relationships such as with our children, with our friends, with our world at large. And this also includes things like our relationship to food and our relationship to self-care and our relationship. I'm going to, you know, help bring a perspective that comes from the A Course in Miracles to all of this to really help relationship. And because everything is a relationship, God, and when it shares one purpose from God, it can be stable and it can be, which is the effect of ultimately what we're all here to remember and remain in and, and shine here for this world to remember and awaken along with us. So with that being said, if you guys um, ever have any thoughts or questions or contributions, I'll keep, but I'm just going to let it rip. <laughs> some notes I'll be referencing, but I also want. Um, so the, the number one place that I, I really wanted to start in is the realization that when we see Excuse me, Brittany, yes. um, I had to check whether it was just my audio. Do you ha have know any reason why you might be going in and out? Is there anything on your end? Um, um, uh, raise your hand if you're hearing her go in and out. Yes. And we want to hear every word. A lot of hands are up. Um, can I pause for five seconds? And yeah, I can please, maybe please do whatever you whatever you need yeah, to. Because I have my partner who can kind of help me with that. Maybe yes, yeah. that would be great. Ready? And maybe what I can try as well is headphones, you guys. So <laughs> try try something. That's right. So let me go um, get my headphones. I'll send a message. We're right here. We're right something. here. And, and we'll join you in peace and love and okay. audio angels coming in to 
make it work out. I know it will. And this gives us all a chance to breathe in the oneness that we are. Knowing that anytime there's an issue outside, it does not need to be an issue inside. We take in the love that's present and we offer it to Brittany and her partner and to all of us that we may enjoy this time together. Oh, she's back. Hi, Brittany. All right. Um, Hi, this. I'm going my other browsers. Um, and he's not here. He took my daughter for a walk. So we'll just have to see. If any, any, any yeses for betterness? I'm not sure that it seems to maybe happening again. Speak, speak a little more. Say, say the ABCs a minute. Okay. Hello, everybody. No, it's still going on. Oh. Christine, do you have any ideas or RGJ? And I. Okay. Rosalind, Rosalind, the, 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 um, the miracle is often logging out and logging in again. Oh, okay. So why don't you, why don't you do that, uh, Brittany? Log, in, log out and log in again, if you would. Okay. Thank you, Kieran J. All right. Holding the space for Brittany and all of us. How many times in your life have you had something that hasn't gone as you might have expected? And then you had 52 people supporting you, knowing that we are the one. Let's all experience that for Brittany. Yay. And we have this chance to be together. And breathing in the oneness again, the truth of who we are. I don't think this has ever happened at Sundays with Spirit before. <laughs> uh, well, I think we can report something special from today. Jennifer called early this morning and wished me a happy birthday. And she was with Glazy and Sean in Vermont. I forgot to tell everybody she's with her teacher, Venerable, in Vermont. And they have a community celebration. Um, this this time every year, and it's uh, so important that they that Jennifer gets to have this little bit of time to do what's best for her to replenish her soul, so she can come back to us. There she is, Brittany. Let's take it away. Oh, there you are. There, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> okay, truly say a few ABCs. Instead okay. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Sounds good so far. Let's go with it. Okay, let's go with it. And then you guys can kind of let me. Uh-oh. Repeat. It's not going well. You're saying uh-oh. Well, it, the first part went fine. It was like five words and then, okay, we'll just do our best and, and I'm sure we'll get the message. So let's okay. just go with it. Thank you, everybody. This is uncertain. Um, sure, someone says maybe turn off my video. Should I just turn off my video? Let's try that. Okay. okay. I'm gonna just talk like this and, and okay. maybe maybe that'll be better. It doesn't have to match up to my face this time. So far, so good. Okay, all right, great. Thank you, everybody. We never really know why these happen, um, but uh, perhaps we'll learn as, as we're going throughout um, this, this topic today. So as I had said before, I turned this off <laughs> or it got back on. Um, I was mentioning how I'm gonna be talking about relationships today. And it's interesting that I'm going to be talking about relationships and then the connection is, but perhaps that's just a sign um, that this is a really important topic to be bringing forward today. So I feel like the question that I want to start us all off with 
not even necessarily to answer per se, but to definitely contemplate and, and just open up with is what is one thing that we can do to find stability in our emotions and thus in our relationships? What is one thing that we can do? Okay, so let's kind of break this down a bit before we even answer intellectually, because I don't want intellectual answers, but we will. Just taking a sip of water here. So let's break it down a little bit. What does stability mean? Stability is steady uh, and not prone to change. And someone who is level-headed objects to swings and emotions. Now, I don't know about you guys, but definitely in human form, having an ego, it is to swing in our emotions of the other. Even if we think about going through COVID collectively, this is something that neighbors and on one extreme of the other, you can see some people are fearful, some people are upset, some people are uncertain, some people with even myself and I ask myself where have I experienced instability in the past I know for me that my instability would always come up monthly that there would be three weeks of the month I'm stable I'm focused I'm grounded in that month I would lose my mind I would end up blaming my partner I would feel you know and and it was just monstrous instability. And so in present norm on earth and the present norm in relationships. And so this gets then what is the one thing or are you guys saying tenth word? Working you guys are saying it's really not working. Because if this is, um, yeah, if you guys aren't hearing me and going to be able to enjoy it with me, oh, that'll make me sad. I can always, um, yeah, sounding for you, honey. Yeah, you're muted right now. What would you like to do, Brittany? Uh I'm hearing the gist of it, I, but that's because I'm determined to hear. We, we are missing um, quite a few words, uh, but what would you like to do? Would you like to come back another time? Or would you like to just keep going and we'll get the gist of it? I, I want you to have your preference. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like I want to do what's most helpful for everyone. And like, this is a, it's, it's quite an important message and there's definitely, that um, are helpful to hear the whole of it. Um, and people are saying it's too hard to understand. And if they're finding it uh, I guess helpful so. for everyone. I um, so. And I don't know why, no one's home, no internets are on. Well, we, we often don't know why things happen. And um, so let, let's, let's go on from here. Um, Brittany, we'll, we'll talk with you about another another time to come, what, how would that be? That works for me. And I, I can also record this and, and put it up on YouTube and share with you guys and share with your community and definitely come back again. Yeah, That would be beautiful. No problem. So, so we're going to ad lib. And <laughs> um, Dove, would you like to join me? Uh, are you available to join me? Dave Fishman, he has his picture on. Dev, are you available? <laughs> uh, all right. Well, maybe he will come on again. Um, I was going to tell you uh, a little bit about uh, about Dev. Oh, Dev, can you can you talk in with with me? And we're going to share what's been going on, how we met, and why we're offering this class together. Are you good to go? Yes, I think I am. Am I? Can yes. you? Okay, very good. Go. You're good to go. I, I am so I'm so thrilled. Go ahead. What? 
I would say I was so thrilled that, that you're here today. And, uh, and when you asked on the G uh, what it is that we're grateful for, I am grateful for you, mm -hmm. Rosalind, for coming into my life. I know that Holy Spirit sent you. Uh, mm -hmm. You are the perfect person for me to be on this new Zoom class that we have on, on, on uh, Tuesdays at 7, from 7 to 8. And uh, we're very happy that Cindy uh, Krupp, uh, most people know Cindy, she's the Zoom master. And together, we're, we're basically uh, seeing how we can live in the, in the present happiness and the joy, regardless of what the, what the conditions or the circumstances are. And I think that that's somehow how we both met and we came together. Both of us had circumstances where maybe grieving and grief could have, could have been the condition that we lived in. But we said, is there another way of seeing it? And I think that that's really what actually happened is, is, we, is we came out into the light together. And I know that Holy Spirit sent you to me so we can share this together. And you'll be leading this coming Tuesday evening at 7 with that wonderful process that you were sharing with me. Thank you. Okay, we'll just, just hang in there. And can you lift your screen so that your name um, doesn't cover your mouth? There you go. That's oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I should have introduced Dove. I didn't know if he would be available. Uh, Dove is one of the scholars and leaders of A Course in Miracles. He knew all of the originals and he's one of our most beloved teachers of A Course in Miracles. He is truly like an encyclopedia. You, you don't even have to Google something. If you can say to Dove, where is this? And he can tell you what line and what, what page is on, what lesson, where in the text. But more than that, much more than that, is he embodies the messages. He lives them every day. And uh, I would like to interview you a little bit. So this is all off the cuff. And everybody knows you in the way that I described you, you know, as the, the brilliant representative of the Course in Miracles. But recently you told me a story about your mother and her grief. When, can you tell everybody that story? Would you be willing? Sure, it's, it's, it's one of my earliest memories. Uh, my oldest brother went off to war when he was 19 years old, and it was one month before the end of World War II, and uh, he was killed in action, and uh, I, I think that was my earliest memory is hearing the Western Union man coming to the door at night, and somehow my mother already, when she knew it was the Western Union man, she was already kind of screaming and when he gave her the news she was basically you know I, I can only say she was like on the floor screaming and uh that was in 1945 and the, i think for the next 33 years she did live in in grieving and asking god why did you do this and why did you have to take my my happiness my joy and of course, you know, she, she was living in a lot of darkness. At the end of her life, she did get Alzheimer's, which from, from my way of looking at it, that was probably a blessing for her because she wasn't in the, in the, in, in the pain of, of, of the grieving. And I, I think that that's the elements that you might be alluding to, Rosalind. Yes, and... Um... That was a powerful story when I heard it, because when we don't make these psychological connections and we don't know what anything is for, but that experience of seeing your mother disappear from living may have been an unconscious marker, even though you had all the spiritual training when your wife passed you, you, you said on a panel uh, at Jennifer's Sunday service uh, at, during the breakout group that you, your wife had passed three months ago, February, but then it was three months, now it's longer, and that you had three days of screaming and suffering, and then it stopped. And 
really during the service right now, when I asked you to tell that story, I never thought of this before, but my parents uh, left Nazi Germany. This part, of course, I, I, I knew, but what I never thought of was how did it affect my grief when Melissa passed? Yes, I had the spiritual training of non-dual since 1995. I had a course in miracles since the 80s and I put my heart and soul into it. But my mother lived a depressed life. She had a depression because she never saw her parents again after age 18 when she left Nazi Germany. So she, her, her life was impacted in some ways by the loss of her parents and her sister in Germany. And I wonder if there wasn't this young part that that had a knowing, you know, it's not a thought, it's not a feeling, it's a knowing there's got to be a different way. This is not the way to grieve and have your life be over to honor the one who's left. That makes no sense. The collective teaches us that the degree to which we grieve is the degree to which we loved somebody. What? Our life should be over because we love them. So one of the things I know about you and your, your wife, just from how you talk about her, because we're very new friends, and I'm going to tell everybody how we, we met, because it, it was in that very meeting, uh, but, but that's uh, getting ahead of myself. I know you were complete with your wife. Is that true? Yes. Yes. I was complete with Melissa. I was not complete with her earlier in her life. And judging her was the reason I came to Masterful Living. It's the reason I did the uh, Teachers of God. It's the reason I kept on going because I knew the judgment was not okay. But miracles happened before she passed on unexpectedly. It was intimate the way you were with your wife. Of course, it's different with a wife and a daughter. But let me tell you all how we met each other because I have never sent someone that I didn't know a story. I, I just don't write to people. I don't write to TV people and tell them what I thought of what they did or music people or book people or I'm ashamed to say, well, I'm not really ashamed, but my politicians have always reflected my views, so I've never written to them. But when Dove said that his wife passed away, and he said he wasn't in that, he wasn't a mess. Let me, let me just put it in, 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 in practical words. He, he, I could tell he was doing fine, but something, something, something said, send of this story that you wrote, this tale. And I'd, I'd never written a, fair, a, a fable before, but it was about, it's called the, the Tulip in the Tree. And if you go to my website, rosalindwork.com, you can download it for free. But it's about a tulip and a tree who listen in on people and hear how they think. They think, that we celebrate birth and we d d get constricted and morose or sad or grief stages when the person's body leaves them. And they have an interaction, really? And they all think the same thing? Well, anyway, it's a sweet story, if I might say, between the tulip and tree. And I sent it to, to Dove. Now, how often, Dove, do you read your mail, what people send you? Well, uh, that kind of thing, I don't normally read at all, but something told me to keep all the way, it's, it's about a five or six minute uh, video, yes. So I, I watched it, yes. You watched it. He said, I read every word and came back to me. And he said, you're a oneness coach? My God, let me tell you, what oneness has meant to me. And he has a book with oneness in the title. And we had it, when can we talk? We had, and then he went through the whole website. Well, we were brought together in, in a holy relationship. I mean, 
we had no context. And there we were brought together to, we don't even know what yet, it's unfolding. We've done two classes together, but we just resonated over the word oneness and said yes to the message of responding to each other. So that was that was quite striking for both of us. And at first, before he before he wrote back uh, that he read everything, he said, "Thank you very much." Um, and whatever, uh, uh, if you need anything, give me a call or whatever. <laughs> and I said, "Well." You know, I guess he's not going to read it. And then two seconds later, <laughs> he 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 picked it up. So it just I, I think this was part of Brittany's message, too, is. How do we do relationships? How do we do our connections? And I assume she was going to go to do we follow spirit? So. Um, Doug, do you have anything else to add to the, to our connection? Well, you know, I, I, I kind of live in, syn in, in synchronicity, which means the next thing is always right there in front of you. That's how I follow spirit. It, it's, it's like if you really trust it, and I do teach really that what the course is really about is developing trust. It's like God is not saying try harder. He said, trust me deeper. And as there's a line of the course that said trust would settle every problem now, which basically I have right on the back of my card, which I always show at this point, trust would settle every problem. I don't know if you can see it, but it says trust would settle every problem now. It's right out of the course, chapter 26, section eight, paragraph two. And why is that? Because we are perfectly cared for. We are. It's the, it's the craziness of the ego that says you got to do this or you should do this or this shouldn't have happened, et cetera, et cetera. When you were telling your story about the grief and the grieving, remember there's two of us here. The ego will always miss Suzanne. There's no two ways about it. Whenever I feel sentimental and like I'm driving in the car and, we, and we're driving past the place that the two of us used to go to together. And I said, you know, I really miss her. But that's the, that's the ego of David that's missing something. What's true is that we are one. That's what brought me back to, the, to letting go of the grief. Three days of grief, and then all of a sudden I looked up at my wedding vows, and the wedding vows, which, was which I wrote 40 years ago, which John Mundy married us on, says, let us commit ourselves to remember that we are one. And I said, if I said that 40 years ago and we have been one, why do I think because she dropped her body, we're not one now? And that made all the difference in the world. So my willingness to let go of the grief and the grieving, even though people say, you're not gonna grieve more? No, actually, what is there to grieve? Only the ego grieves, only the ego grieves. When, when you're present now, we are all one. And that's what I like about oneness. Beautiful. Thank you, David. So let's take this time now to go into meditation. This is the time in Jennifer's service where she likes to embody the message. And what was the message for you today? Was it oneness? Was it instability that Brittany was starting to tell us about? And if we go to instability, what is the opposite of instability? The opposite of instability is stable. And as David just talked talk to us about the ego, that is not where we find stability. And I would like to offer you something today. Let today be a new day, a new moment, a new second. And if you've always used the word God, and that word is you comfort, then for sure use it. 
But just for today, could you play with another word that would allow you to be fully one with the one? Like what if you were a puzzle piece of the whole puzzle? What if you are what God is, which is source? What would it be like to know 100% that you are what God is? What came to me recently is if you turn that around and say, God is what you are, you'll come up with any unworthiness that you might have. And check in with that. And let's do a little deeper meditation and take that unworthiness and that number that might have been connected with your upset in the beginning when we did the prayer. And if it's not connected, just give your unworthiness. It's not even yours. Give the unworthiness a number. And let's just park that inside your head where you might have thought you were, and where you might have thought you resided. And let's fill your head with a violet light, with the flame, with the light that could be clear. It could be filled with breath. It could be filled with wholeness. And let's embody the light and fill your neck and your jaw and your shoulders and your arms and reach your arms out to the sides. And now eat outside either finger through your arm out your fingers the light is filling you and now you're reaching out into the room and from the room you're reaching out outside the room and from outside the room you're allowing the sun to shine the clouds to be the rain, or in Florida, the storm. And let's know that allowing is just peace with what is. It doesn't mean you agree, but you're letting it be. And your fingers, move those fingers that are outside and allow them to reach for the stars and the moon and the sun and the sky that's underneath whatever weather is in front. And Brittany was talking about instability. And let's think of instability as like the weather. But you are not the weather. You are what is experiencing this right now? There's the earth, there's the stars, there's the galaxy, there's the weather. And can you tell where you end and all that begins? And what if you're part of eternity? What if? that that's what the Course in Miracles might mean when they say you were never born and you will not die. And if you would join me coming back into your room and into your fingers and into your body and take a breath 
and open your eyes, if you will, softly with the softness that might have come from what you just experienced. And knowing that you can view the world softly. I came across something that Christian Murti said, which is there can be problems in the world. There can be issues, there can be storms. But if there are no storms inside you, there are no storms. And the oneness is available to all of us if we'll claim it. You had an experience today. Check in with that upset and see if that number is the same or if it might have changed. And know that from this place that we're in together, this oneness place, this need not be a state. This can be who you are, the puzzle piece of the big puzzle. And you are needed in this incarnation to be exactly the kind of tulip flower you're here to be. How do I know that? Because it is. And 100% of the time, I go with what is if I want to stay in peace. And a lot of time people think that they need to make things right by fighting with it, what is. But 100% of the time we lose when we do that. So what would you like to claim today? What's yours? Is there something you would like to bring to your relationships, to your relationship with yourself or with another or with your family or with your friends or to your life or with someone who is past? Quantum physics proves what we've always known in the spirit world. Things do not end when the body disappears. So it's not too late to complete any relationship. So let's just take a moment and see if there's something that you would like to rectify by speaking to someone who's passed, either they've passed on or they're in your past life. And if there's something that you could say to someone to make things right that's living, that's good too. Let's just take a second or two and see what that might be. Our job here is to embody the truth of what we are. Unworthiness is not true. Because if you are what God is, what's that saying about God? Or the oneness, or source, or whatever name you came up with today. I like to make things new. I feel inspired when I use a new word. It wakes me up. So that's why I'm offering it to you today. So we will have another song by our dear Ray, and then we'll go to our breakout rooms. 
and you can be thinking of what would you like to claim today? What would you like to complete? What is your new truth? Are you ready, Ray? Yes. Hmm. I'm going to sing something um, to speak that speaks to oneness. And this is a song that um, is sung from the soul to the living one as expressed in all of creation recognizing the unity of all life, the oneness of all life. This is a song called My One.
Oh, Ray, so beautiful. I know we're all touched. All right, this is the time in the service where we get to go to breakout rooms and share our experience, what, we, what we're going to claim, any decisions we've made. And this is unique to this service. It's not necessary to talk. It's a gift to be a good listener. And thank you, Christine, for being our pilot today and setting up the breakout rooms. Are you ready? Yes. All right, you'll see on the bottom of your screen, uh, join. And now's the time. And if you have had some trouble with not seeing that, there's a way to do it on the bottom of your screen. Have a great breakout, everybody. And some of us will be gathered here together for the live Facebook chat. It's so beautiful to see every single one of you. Karen Jay, do you want to start with a share for today? Thank you, Rosalind. I'd like to thank you for your stability in the unstable circumstances of this service with the speaker unable to uh, give what they would like to present. I'd like to uh, yeah, offer my appreciation for the beautiful way that you've handled it. Thank you. Um, yeah. So what I would like to offer is thinking of this stability, instability, uh, idea and oneness, which have been themes. The course says that our experience, the world that we uh, seem to live in and our circumstances are precisely our mind's choice. Whatever the person thinks about it, the mind is choosing every detail of our experience. So if we're in grief, the mind is choosing grief. If we're angry, the mind is choosing anger. If we feel happy, the mind is choosing happiness. Although if it's reference to the world, it will only be an illusion of happiness. And this is so incredibly powerful to claim ownership of what we are producing from our minds. Because then we can come back to the source of our experience in our mind with spirit and choose the experience that we would truly like, that reflects our oneness, that reflects our innate peace and joy and total stability. We are unchanging in our natural state and anything else has to be ego. And I'd like to offer a way of seeing whatever our circumstances might be, that we can be in the quiet center with spirit and watch the clearing that happens through that decision. Everything can be seen as the clearing, whereas we are stable, peaceful, Quiet, the guilt, the rage, the upset, the disappointment, the sickness, whatever the upset might be, these are clouds in the mind. And we can choose to let them go and be stable and quiet and with spirit and follow. No drama, no upset. And if we continue to practice this, we will be able to maintain that stable connection with spirit, whatever seems to be happening around us. Now, I love this, uh, what you were saying, Rosalind, about Krishnamurti saying, if there are storms outside, but there are no storms inside, there are no storms. Our, our task is to see the nothingness and the meaninglessness 
of our inner storms. This is a, um, a phantom voice. This is an hallucination outside in, and inside. If we think there's upset or storms. And connected to spirit, we can see the meaninglessness and the nothingness and the unreality of anything that is not the peace of God. The lesson today, if you're going through from January the 1st, is I want the peace of God. It's such a fabulous lesson. Makes it really clear. If we want the peace of God, we have the peace of God. If we don't want the peace of God, we don't have the peace of God. How simple can you get? And there's never, ever a cause in the world that goes against that. Mind wants peace, it has peace. Mind doesn't want to have peace, it doesn't have peace. And then it makes up stories to justify the lack of peace. So I would just like to um, celebrate our power for choosing the quiet centre, being here with spirit and celebrating the clearing, if there is clearing in our mind to be done. Thank you. Thank you, Karen Jay. That's so beautiful. You're so clear, as Dove just said. Do you want to share anything on what Karen Jay said, Dove? Are you muted? Yeah. All right, thank you, uh, Karan. Thank you so much because as you were sharing, it was very clear and pure that that you had risen above the the battleground, which is where the ego tries to work in concepts. And even Jesus laughs at this lesson one eighty five. He says to say these words is nothing, but to mean it is everything. Ken uh, Wapik, I just posted, says. The idea of I want the peace of God cannot be understood from the world's perspective, for they can be unknown only through the mind's, not the brain's experience. In the holy instant, when your mind is outside the dream of time and space, the peace and love you feel tell you that these words are true. When I had said earlier, thank you, yeah, when I said earlier, <clears throat> that whenever you feel sentimental, you feel you're missing, and I really wish he was here. And, you know, those are the sentiments of the ego thought system that lives in time, lives in the past, future, oh, you know, would be so much better if she was here. This is the first 4th of July that she's not here. And you can, you can sent it, you can sent sentimental, sentimental, sentimentalize, sentimentalize that uh, forever until you come back to the holy instant and realize that we are one in this in this oneness in this nowness there, there is nothing but this oneness and you don't find it in time or space and ego only lives in time and space and spirit lives in the eternal now so that is that's what i would share thank you that's beautiful and yeah i'd like to amplify that oneness in the now and I call it the radical now just to wake myself up and to be able to communicate with people that it's not even, let's say this conversation, this conversation is one level, but it's the stories that, we're, that we have about talking, it's the stories we have about each other, it's the space behind the stories, it's no story. If there's any story going on, we're not in the radical now. And I want to add something to what Dove and Kieran Jay said. I like to think of the ego as the collective because I no longer want to own it as mine. I don't want to personalize it. I don't believe in it. I, I like to have a a distant relationship when I see it. And the way I do that, because I, 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 I could be very critical even in my spiritual life when I was younger. And so I would be down on myself if I saw a parade of ego behavior. But when I name it as 
my, uh, not, did I say collective before? No, I, I don't mean the collective. It, it, it's, what's the word? It's a C word that I mean. I mean uh, conditioning. And it is, does come from the collective and it does come from our families, but this is my conditioned self. And I don't really feel guilty about my conditioned self. It's just my reaction to being in the separate world. But what I do instead of getting involved with the conditioned self is I watch for the story. No labels on feelings. I know the feeling. I don't need to get into the story of the feeling. I know if I'm angry. I know if I've had a rejected instant. I don't need to call it rejection and start to describe the situation in which I feel rejected. Now I'm off. I'm away from the oneness. But if I notice it without a label, I have a chance to, in the blink of my eye, return to oneness. And, and like Dove said, there's, there's a, it, people say with grief, oh, you have your memories. Uh-uh, those are stories. They will bring the suffering back. The guaranteed, the future, that's also guaranteed to bring the suffering back. The oneness has no story and it's nothing and it's everything. Ray, do you have anything to share? Uh, boy, this is a, an interesting morning. <laughs> I, I love the, um, the improvisational aspect of it. You know, uh, in music, impro improvisation is a gift. An opportunity to improvise is a gift. You know, uh, you're sitting on the bandstand and, uh, you know, you're playing a cut, uh, playing a song and there's an opening uh, to explore. We love that sort of thing. So it was uh, really lovely to see how it manifested, how it showed up in, in this space. And I'm looking forward to hearing what Brittany had to say too. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as something to say, my, um, I, I hope this is helpful. Um, a, a, lot of this, a lot of the conversation about oneness has really been um, speaking to my heart. Uh, <clears throat> that song that I sang is one of a pair of songs that speak to the same subject from different directions. Um, my personal spiritual practice um, centers uh, around uh, Kabbalah, uh, the, the Kabbalah, the, the Hermetic Kabbalah specifically. And what we speak of in Kabbalah is um, the middle path. M many people are familiar with the Kabbalistic uh, tree of life. It's a, it's a glyph that we use to describe all sorts of things, but especially the uh, incarnation of the, or the creation of the universe, but there's a middle path. It consists of three pillars and is the middle pillar that is the, that is a symbolically equilibrating all of the polarities of experience and polarities in life. And when one travels the middle pillar back to conscious recognition of unity with the one life, the one power, it balances all of the seeming disparities in life. And that's been a, my, my, my focus and concentration, especially this week as I'm being called into a, into a new expression of, of life. There's some stuff that's coming through and it's good stuff, but it only makes sense and seems effective to me as I stay right there in oneness. Um, if I fall into, a, uh, I believe this is the correct use of the word, egoic trap <laughs> of believing too much that it's this or believing too much that it's that, either the seeming good or the seeming bad. I'm patting myself on the back at a boy, that's a way to go, or uh, this is never going to work. Nobody's going to ever listen to me. Either way, I'm straying from that path, and there will be something introduced into my life to bring the equilibration back. So best to just go ahead and start off from the beginning of the day in oneness, in the middle pillar, in that space of reverence and adoration. Uh, in the song, it says, Baruch Ata Adonai, which is the beginning of a, of a, of a, uh, of a common uh, prayer in Hebrew. Blessed art thou, O living one. 
<laughs> Blessed art thou, living one. I begin my day with a declaration of the truth of, of my being, and I begin my day with a connecting to that one source of life, that one power, knowing that it's breathing me, that it's beating my, my heart, that it's it's tingling the senses, everything, everything is, is, is uh, I'm going to start preaching, help me, <laughs> but that's, that's what's been on my mind, that's where, where we are, so I hope this is helpful. Incredibly helpful, so beautiful, and I love your Hebrew words, they touch me, mm. and the middle, the middle ground, anybody here been an addict before in your life, an extreme in one way or the other, yeah. even if you couldn't call, I mean, and the middle ground sounded so boring and so so bad. And it is the way. <laughs> but it, one has to learn that from experience. One additional thing in, yes. in that Kabbalistic practice, uh, because we're talking about a series of initiations as we ascend in consciousness. Again, this Kabbalah. But that middle pillar is the pillar of mildness compared to the middle pillar of severity or the pillar of mercy but the pillar of mildness it seems like it would be an easy road but it's actually the most challenging it is actually the most challenging because it requires a greater sacrifice as in making sacred all those things that i thought i identified with make them sacred and set them in their proper place by identifying again with that one life one power one spirit so it, that's what i'm about <laughs> so beautiful. And your music is deeper and deeper. And we thank you for your shares today. It's very, very grounding and beautiful. Thank my you. Joy. My joy. And Dove had to leave. Christine, do you want to share it all? I think I'm good, but thank you, Robert. Yeah, okay. Um, Karen Jay, do you have anything else to say? Thank you, Rosalind. Yes, there's just something in, in my mind. Um, you mentioned the conditioned self. And I would just like to give um, my question mark over some interpretations. I'm not saying anything about how you see it, but uh, I come across um, not infrequently people talking about the conditioning of society. You know, society has conditioned us. The family has conditioned us. Our education system has conditioned us. And from a Course in Miracles point of view, nothing has conditioned us but ourselves. All these seeming outside influences are our own thoughts. We decided to have the limitations or the hurt or the upset or the lack of opportunities or the, the bad genes or whatever it is that um, from the worldly point, point of view, you might think that's been conditioned into us by the system. And I would just like to be clear here, my understanding of Course in Miracles says it's just not like that at all. Yes, thank you, Karen Jay. And uh, I appreciate your, uh, your purity with the Course in Miracles. From the non-dual, we like to not be interested in even the ego. We, 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 we have a way to see how that causes pain, to be even interested in the ego and all of its manifestations. And so it's just another way of getting less involved with the story and going to where we're going, which is the one. So, but I appreciate your bringing that up. And um, I, like, I like it really so much that you are a purist and that you were speaking <laughs> out. Hi, everybody. How, how was the breakout room? Was it good? Thumbs up? Yes. Wonderful. If you want to put in the chat, what you received, what you're claiming, any decisions you've made, that would be beautiful. Oh, I see some wonderful prompts there in the chat. And this is our, the time in our service where we have an opportunity to make an offering to Jennifer and the power of love for this miraculous 
service that she puts on every Sunday, which takes all of her paid staff to do a part of this. GJ is here today. Christina is a volunteer. I'm a volunteer. We like to pay our speaker and uh, our singer and tithe to them. Uh, and so if you are called to help, here are a couple of ways you can do it. Um, and it will be in the chat as I speak. Uh, you can receive a text message every day. And I'm told by Jennifer that she loves getting her own messages every day, that there would come as a surprise. Uh, usually there are two a day and you can sign up for as little as a dollar a day or make a continuous donation at livingacourseinmiracles.com slash text. You can also make a donation. Sorry about that. Um, you can make a donation at jenniferhadley.com as well as a living course in miracle.com slash donate. And so we really appreciate anything that you feel called to give to support. And we also appreciate all the people who've already donated. And most of all, we appreciate your presence here today and at other services. You are what makes this happen. And um, this is also a time where we can make some announcements. And uh, for the Power of Love Ministry, uh, there's a parenting class going on. It's six online classes that go over 12 weeks. There'll be a support group in between. And I'm told it's terrific. I know the teachers uh, are fabulous and have lived the experience of bringing spirit into their parenting. And I'm aware that some people have joined who don't have children, but manage people in, in groups, in business or in other circumstances. And they asked, would this be helpful? And of course, the same principles have apply. It has already begun but I believe you can still, I know you can still join. And then in mid-July, uh, End Self-Sabotage will start and it's a collection of incredible experiences which Jennifer will tell you more about in the coming weeks. And just to wet your lips there or uh, get you excited, um, two times a day there'll be videos uh, so that you can release any, any ways that you feel burdened uh, by self-sabotaging. And uh, I would love for you to come and visit me on my website, rosalynrourke.com, R-O-S-A-L-Y-N-R-O-U-R-K-E. And Dove put in um, the chat our Tuesday class. He's, uh, it's not on my website yet because it's so new. And my webmaster has been ill, so it hasn't gotten on there yet. Uh, but we would love for you to join us. It's on a love offering basis. And uh, hey, do you have any announcements? I do not have an announcement today. How can people get your songs? Ah, one moment. The best way uh, to get my music is uh, to check online at iTunes. Uh, just check for Ray Davis. Um, the best CD to pick up would be uh, the, 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 the soundtrack by Ray Davis, Act One. It's a long title, but it's a good, good, uh, good CD. Thank the you. The soundtrack by Ray Davis, Act One on iTunes. Beautiful. All right. And I think we're ready for our last song, Ray. Yay. Okay. <clears throat> Hmm. I'm caught between songs. So I'm just going to go with this one. All right. There we go. This is a song that tortured me years ago. <laughs> it tormented me. I didn't want to write this song because I was just coming into, uh, I was in a, in a completely different space before the teachings. And I wanted to write a cynical song about near death experiences. I wanted it to be cynical. But as it was coming through, it sounded like it was uh, 
you know, there was something else wanting to speak through me. So I set it down and then years later, after coming into these teachings, I realized there was something there to be said. So this song is called, Now I Know Everything. Thank you. We all join you in our applause. So if you would join me now in our collaborative prayer with the G that is gratitude. And what are you grateful for? Once again, I'm grateful 
for all of you being here on my birthday to support this service, to shine your light, and to uphold everything for Brittany when things weren't working. The angels were upon us, supporting, loving. What are you grateful for? And let's make an offering of anything that might still block us, any fear, any resistance, any concerns, any worries, any refusals. And let's make a declaration to the knowing of who we are and even better, the knowing of what we are. We are the one. We are one with the one. And for that, we are so grateful. What is your declaration? Let's embody that with each and every person because they are us. And we all say amen. And thank you for being here today. Bye everyone. Amen, amen, amen to your prayers.